It's October and this is the Library Road Show. On the show today, American journalist and author Rick Bragg, a review of the new digital resource called Artemis, book reviews from our youngest library patrons, musician, dulcimer player, writer, and author Mike Anderson, plus a whole lot more from your East Baton Rouge Parish Library System. Welcome to the October edition of the Library Roadshow. I'm Mary Stein and this is a production of your East Baton Rouge Parish Library System. We've had such a busy summer filled with wonderful workshops, concerts, programs, and events for all ages and interests. Everything from the summer reading program itself to movies on the plaza, interactive movie making workshops and genealogy classes, even best-selling authors Rick Bragg and Andrea Wolf. And we are not backing off for the fall by any means. Let me start off by bragging just a little bit. Your East Baton Rouge Parish Library has just been honored with one of the 2015 Landmark Library Awards, and that's a really big deal. Plus, we were featured in the new America's Library Design Showcase and won the Member's Choice Award for the AIA Baton Rouge Chapter Rose Awards. How about those accolades? It's all part of the whole package. Free access to books, audio, and library resources are just a few of the benefits available to you when you get a library card. Need free access to a computer? You get that. Want free access to premium digital resources like Mango Languages and Lynda.com? You get that. Need to book a meeting space? You get that. Heck, you can even check out a telescope or use a digital printer with your library card. If you live in East Baton Rouge Parish, pick up your free library card from your local branch library today. Premium access to everything the library system has to offer is waiting for you doesn't just mean cooler weather, it means research and term papers. Now the library has always had plenty of good sources to go around, but sometimes there's just too many to choose from. So we've got something new to help students with that all-important literature paper. Adam St. Pierre joins us now to explain in the digital download. Your East Baton Rouge Parish Library has a great new resource to help with those literary criticism papers. That resource is called Artemis. This fantastic product by Gale is a one-stop shop for all your literary research paper needs. Students, no longer do you need to go to Literary Criticism Online, Literature Research Center, LitFinder, Scribner's, or Twain's. It's all available in one easy search with Artemis. Don't know what topic to write about? Use the topic finder to see what resources are available before you start writing. The night before? And it's all free with just your library card. To check out Artemis, head over to the digital library at ebrpl.com. Thanks, Adam. This is a great mashup. Some of the best resources for literary criticism for students from middle school all the way through college, all accessed through one convenient portal. It's a great time saver for research so they can concentrate on critical thinking and writing. And all you need is that library card. Speaking of which, we have been really pushing library card signups hard with the help of Snoopy and Woodstock and the whole Peanuts gang. If you've not updated your card in a while, drop one by. Let's shift gears and check in with Kayla Perkins, reporting in from Beyond the Stacks. We host me and author here at the library, from local storytellers to Pulitzer Prize winners. You just never know who you'll meet when you visit your local library. American journalist and author Rick Bragg came to the main library at Goodwood recently to share his book, Jerry Lee Lewis, His Own Story. Well, the book is called Jerry Lee Lewis, His Own Story, and it is Jerry Lee's chance. He's 80 now. It's his chance to walk back down his life, this remarkable, violent, uh, unbelievable life, and tell his story his way. Rick is a Pulitzer Prize winning author known for his nonfiction books, especially those about the South. 
This makes Jerry Lee Lewis the perfect subject in your East Baton Rouge Parish Library, the perfect venue for a program like this. Jerry Lee is Louisiana in some ways, and I want them to get to know him a little bit better. And more than 100 folks got to do just that because programs like this bring alive the written word. There's always a lingering question. There's always uh, a half answer, no matter how hard you try. There's always a gap or a crack. And, you know, we'll try to fill that in a little bit today. Copies of Rick's book, Jerry Lee Lewis, His Own Story, are available now. Check out your copy today. Discover what programs are coming to your local library online at www.ebrpl.com or pick up a copy of the Source newsletter for all upcoming events. I don't know if you caught it, but did you see that little red robot on the podium at Rick Bragg's event? That's a little something we created using the 3D printer at the main library. You can print 3D objects too, even as small and detailed as a mini version of Rick's book. Check out the Making Info Guide to find out more. And if you can't get enough of award-winning authors, how about dropping by when David Adler's in the house? The acclaimed author of the Cam Jansen series for kids will be sharing his writing life with us during the 38th Annual Author Illustrator Series in October. Stay right there. After the break, Library Director Spencer Watts joins me for a chat right here on the Library Roadshow. Sometimes all it takes to be a dad is remembering how to be a kid again. <laughs> Take time to be a dad today. Give me back! They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait and move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. As an American, it's hard to hear that we have a serious hunger issue in our country. And as a parent, it's even harder to hear that one in five of our kids struggles with hunger, especially when billions of pounds of good food are wasted every year. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide billions of meals to families in need right in your community. Visit feedingamerica.org to support Feeding America and your local food bank. Together we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. You're watching the October edition of the Library Roadshow, everything you need to know about your local library system. Now, one of the awards I did not mention a few years ago, your East Baton Rouge Parish Library has been selected as one of America's star libraries for three years in a row. And people are really making use of all of our libraries more than ever. Joining me now is Spencer Watts, the library director for the entire library system. So Spencer, what do these awards really say about the library system as a whole? I think they say that when people look at us from a, a distance and look at us very objectively and you have a, a process that people go through and, and kind of rigorously examine the library system, that they say what a lot of the local people tell us that we have a very good library system. Actually it says that uh, compared to other libraries as an important benchmark we've achieved a lot of excellence with, with the services and the facilities that we offer the people of East Baton Rouge. And they're in turn being used by all these same people that live in Baton Rouge. Yes, I, I, I think the most important benchmark of all that we have every day is how many people actually use the library. That we have so many households that have uh, cards. That we have over 340,000 card holders in, in our uh, parish. And the fact that they use the library with such frequency, and um, I'm always happy when we get measurements that say that our customer satisfaction is fairly high too. We're not perfect, <laughs> but we think we're um, that we do 
do a good job in lots of ways, and we certainly uh, have people voting for us in terms of how good we are in coming uh, back for return visits. They kind of vote with their feet. Mm -hmm. They vote with their uh, keyboards as mm -hmm. they as they tap into our services 24 hours a day, seven days a week also. So we have good, heavy, widespread usage, and I think that's one of the most important attributes uh, for our library is that we have a great customer base that keeps on coming back to use the library. Right, not just here at the main library, but throughout the entire parish. Everywhere throughout the parish, yes. Well, the library's 10-year dedicated tax is indeed coming up for renewal in October. Why is this tax so important? Well, it's important because it's our primary source of funding. Over 98% of our funding comes from it. So everything from staff um, to uh, our materials budget, the things that we can buy in terms of books and databases and online uh, e-books, those kinds of things, that all of that funding um, comes from this this tax. And it's um, it, it gives us stability in funding so that we can plan and spend carefully. And it's also the source of our money for our pay-as-you-go plan where mm. we can make capital improvements. Also it pays for all the maintenance and upkeep of all the facilities and for everything, all those things that are necessary to run the library. Like the lights. Like, like utilities, <laughs> heating, air conditioning, right. lights. Those things are important. And without the tax, we don't have any money at all. So it's a real important event every 10 years that the, the voters um, renew this dedicated tax for the library. So this isn't a new tax? No, this is the same tax that we've collected for 30 years now. It's the same tax for uh, tax rate, millage rate, 11.1, uh, that was uh, enacted in 19, or approved in 1995 and 2005 also. Well, when is the election? The election is on October the 20th. Fourth uh, it, of this year. Right. <laughs> it's, it's fast so approaching. Just a few days, it seems like. Yes. And what about early voting? That's something that Americans have really d been drawn to over the last few years. Yes, I, and, and I think it's a great thing. It encourages more people to participate in the voting process. And, and here uh, in Louisiana, uh, is October the 10th, Saturday, October the 10th through October the 17th. Right. Because, of course, Research shows that library users are more civically engaged than the rest of the electorate, and that's kind of interesting to all of us, but, but we still have to make the decision to go to the polls. Yes. So by making it convenient, that really helps the voters here at home. Um, do we know where the actual proposition shows up on the ballot? People often ask me that. Okay. We do not have that information yet. That's determined by the state as they put together the ballot. So hopefully that information will be available soon. It will certainly be available by October the 10th. Right. Um, but as soon as we know that, I think we will try to make sure that people know where we are. That is a difficulty um, in, in the ballot. There, there are the uh, candidates There's for a lot of things to choose from. To go in yeah. on, and then there are the propositions. And yeah. we know that there will be at least two or three other propositions on this ballot in addition to, yeah. the, to the library uh, dedicated. So tax. how do people find out more? Um, it, there's lots of different ways that you can find out more about it. One is that you can visit our, um, our website. We have uh, frequently asked questions about the, um, the tax and how it's kind of determined and what it's used for and any of the other questions you might have about the process, um, and that's available on our website. Okay. Well, all those specifics and more. Thanks, Spencer. So if people want to help with the campaign, they simply need to contact the EBR Library PAC through the East Baton Rouge Parish Library PAC Facebook page or the Vote for EBR Twitter and Gmail accounts, and I bet we'll start seeing that friendly yellow bird all around town. After the break, the dulcimer guy, Mike Anderson. Plus, we have book reviews with our youngest library patrons. All that and more next. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov.
A single ember that escapes from a wildfire can travel more than a mile. That single ember can ignite and destroy your home or even your community. You can't control where that ember will land, only what happens when it does. Get Fire Adapted now at fireadapted.org. Budget, so don't accept defeat. Now you can get covered and still buy me treats. You take care of your pets. Now it's their turn to take care of you. Visit GetCoveredAmerica.org to learn about your health insurance options. Welcome back to the October edition of the Library Roadshow. Fall just seems to be a natural season for storytelling. Something about the change in weather, even here in Baton Rouge. It brings out the yarn spinners in all of us. And one of our favorite yarn spinners is making a special visit this October. Mike Anderson joins us now for a little chat. Mike, you're known as the dulcimer guy, yet you're coming to the East Baton Rouge Parish Library to read Halloween stories. What gives? Well, what gives is that my website is Dulcimer Guy. Dot com. And a lot of years ago, a librarian somewhere was looking for a handle to hang on me and thought of lots of things, but then looked at my website and said Dulcimer Guy, so I became Mike Anderson, the Dulcimer Guy. So it actually came from my website, although I do play an awful lot of Mountain Dulcimer, and I'm probably uh, in some circles best known for that. What's your background, Mike? Have you always played dulcimer and told stories together? No. I did not start playing any music at all until I was in the middle of uh, college, which has been quite some time ago. My family was not musical at all. And I just uh, picked it up and just started playing. And I've taught myself all the way along and it's taken me all over the world now. This past summer, you were in Baton Rouge. Tell us about some of the experiences you've had. I've been to Baton Rouge now several times. Um, I've also played across the river in Fort Allen at a Mountain Dulcimer Festival, which happens in March. Lots and lots of experiences. I've met a great number of kids. I don't have the names for any of them. Um, but they've been just wonderful kids, very attentive, very listening wanting to have fun and just learn. So it's been a, been a really, really good time uh, coming to Baton Rouge and being able to travel around and see all the different branch libraries. Now, I know you come to the library to do children's programs, but don't you have quite a following among Dulcimer fans? Yes, I'm not just a children's performer, although with the things that I have been able to do as a children's performer, that would have been quite a career all by itself. But I do tour nationally as a mountain dulcimer player, teaching workshops and doing concerts. I travel as a folk singer and also as an author, children's author. Now my last question, so do you enjoy the food in Baton Rouge? Yes, I have a great deal. This last summer, Pabby Arnold took me around to several different places. And this last summer, I really... Uh, really sought out some of the really wonderful places to go and some of the off the beaten path um, places to eat. There's a wonderful gas station somewhere down from where my hotel was. I can I know how to get there from the hotel. Uh, that was just absolutely marvelous and it's not one of the places that would be on the tourists list of place to go. So I've enjoyed the, uh, the, fat, the food a great deal and of course I made sure Given, given that my name is Mike Anderson, I was at Mike Anderson's restaurant. Thanks, Mike. Spicy food, great stories, and sweet sounds. Can't wait to hear what you have in store for us. And speaking of stories, we checked in with some local kids to find out what they're reading. My name is Walter, and I like its Halloween deer dragon because it has a deer dragon and it's wearing a witch hat. Um, I have read a little bit of the series, not all of it. <laughs> so, um, I can show you the book if you want. Um, you don't need to see these title pages. <laughs> Boring. Fall. Leaves. 
trees, a boy and his dragon. They're piling up it, and then he's blowing fire. This part. Um, it's when they put a can and some ears on the jack o' lantern. My mom brings me to the library, and then I like that it has tons of books and um. Thanks, kids. It's great to see even the youngest of our community making good use of your library system. Stay right there. You're watching the Library Roadshow. I guess sometimes things just happen. Devastating things. Your whole world changes in an instant. That's what happened to me the day my mother had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. Don't let E. coli mosh with your food. An estimated 3,000 Americans die from a foodborne illness each year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So always separate raw meat from vegetables. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. So they say it's a man's world? I don't see anybody's name on it. While they were doing their thing, we slowly changed our world. Today, women can do anything men can do. And there's one thing we're even better at. Right, mi cariño. So like I said, everything I learned about cooking, I learned from grandmas and bananas. Shall we go again? Yep. Mix the beef with the onions, the onions with the peppers, the peppers with the paprika, the paprika, the garlic, the garlic with the oregano, the oregano with the cumin. Got it? Got it. Throw in the olives, stir, season, stir again, pour out the flour, roll out the dough, make a circle, drop in a fistful of filling, fold over, press down, and ta-da! Hmm. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. My name is Melissa Easton and I'm head of the Special Collections Department at the Baton Rouge Room Archive located inside the main library at Goodwood where Baton Rouge history comes alive. Before the Metro Council was established in 1949, there was the police jury. Before the police jury, which was established around 1827, there was the Board of Selectmen. When our city was incorporated in 1817, this was the governing body. This minute book is the earliest known record of municipal proceedings in Baton Rouge. Much of the work that this board did focused on municipal improvements and, of course, taxation. Another notable law passed in the early days of Baton Rouge was one that required permission from the president of the board to hold a charivari, which was a traditional French ritual that was a raucous procession escorting the newlyweds home after the wedding ceremony. The board also voted to erect a pair of stocks in a pillory near the jail and resolved that anyone convicted of being drunk and disorderly shall be placed in the stocks for not less than one hour nor more than ten at the discretion of the town magistrate. See this and many other artifacts of historical significance at the Baton Rouge Room Archive located inside the main library at Goodwood where Baton Rouge history comes alive. You're watching the October edition of the Library Roadshow, a production of your East Baton Rouge Parish Library System. Did you know that there was so much interesting information about the history of Baton Rouge all under one roof? Come on down and check out the great old photographs, research your Baton Rouge genealogy, or just study up on the history of our great capital city. It's all available at the main library on Goodwood, and it's free with your East Baton Rouge Parish Library card.
I have two phenomenal reads for all of you out in TV land. The first is The Martian by Andy Ware. Six days ago, astronaut Mark Watney became one of the first people to walk on Mars. Now he's sure he'll be the first person to die there. After a dust storm nearly kills him and forces his crew to evacuate while thinking him dead, Mark finds himself stranded and completely alone with no way to even signal Earth that he's alive. And even if he could get word out, his supplies are surely to be gone long before rescue can arrive. Chances are, though, he won't have time to starve to death. The damaged machinery, the unforgiving environment, and plain old human error are much more likely to kill him first. But Mark isn't ready to give up yet. Drawing on his ingenuity, his engineering skills, and a relentless dog refusal to quit, he steadfastly confronts one seemingly insurmountable obstacle after the other. Will his resourcefulness be enough to overcome these impossible odds against him? The best thing about this book is the juxtaposition between the very scientific nature of everything March must do to survive, which gave me a renewed level of respect for just how smart astronauts have to be. And of course, his absolutely wonderful personality. Mark maintains his sense of humor throughout every hardship he faces. It's pretty much impossible to not be charmed by him. The novel is being adapted for a feature film. You can catch Matt Damon starring as Mark in a theater near you. And of course, there's Black Mass, the true story of an unholy alliance between the FBI and the Irish mob by Dick Lair and Gerard O'Neill. In this work of nonfiction, James Whitey Bulger becomes one of the most ruthless gangsters in all of U.S. history, and all because of an unholy allowance deal he made with a childhood friend. John Connolly, a rising star in the Boston FBI office, offered Bulger protection in return for helping the feds eliminate Boston's Italian mafia. But no one offered Boston protection from Whitey Bulger, who in a blizzard of gangland-style killings took over the city's drug trade. Whitey's deal with Connolly's FBI spiraled out of control to become the biggest informant scandal in FBI history. Black Mass is a New York Times and Boston Globe bestseller written by two former reporters who were in on the case from the beginning. It is an epic story of violence, the double cross and corruption, and at the center of which are two black hearts from old friends whose lives have unfolded in the darkness of a permanent midnight. You can catch the adaptation in the movie theaters now starring the incomparable Johnny Depp. And that's how the page turns. Put me down for The Martian. That kind of feels like those great man versus the universe novels from the golden age of science fiction. And I love great sci-fi. And now for today's contest. Visit the library's Facebook page at facebook.com slash ebrpl and post your own photo for Bookface Friday to the wall. We'll pick our favorite and get you something special to say thank you. That's facebook.com slash ebrpl. And while you're there, enjoy. We're not your grandfather's library anymore. What's coming up on the Library Roadshow next month? We'll be getting ready for Attic Treasures and Collectibles. I'll take you to the Baton Rouge Mini Maker Fair at the Main Library at Goodwood. And I'll be unpacking the bookmobile and stowing all of the One Book, One Community swag left over from the Louisiana State Book Festival. Thanks so much for joining us on the Library Roadshow. And remember, your East Baton Rouge Parish Library is open seven days a week at each and every one of 14 convenient branches, plus 24-7 on the web. Check us out at ebrpl.com. And that's how we roll.